Good morning. My name is Adam Sadowski, and I'm the president and CEO of SynLabs. SynLabs is a group of uh, creative engineers, scientists, uh, designers, builders of all kinds who uh, love coming together to create you know, wonderful interactive art using computers or using very low-tech uh, machinery, as we're going to be uh, discussing a little bit today. Uh, the topic of this talk is, of course, music, machines, and life. And um, uh, the subtitle of that, of course, is a little bit uh, uh, different. It's what uh, building a large and complicated Rube Goldberg machine for the band OK Go taught us about life. Uh, so with that, let's begin. This, of course, is the opening frame of that video that we built for them. Uh, uh, um, the uh, band came to us in August of 2009 saying that they wanted us to build them a machine that they could dance with. And we were really excited by this idea. Um, of course, the band is no stranger to dancing with machines. Uh, their song, uh, Here It Goes Again, 57 plus million views, a Grammy, four guys dancing on eight treadmills, uh, doing a, a, just an extraordinary job, a beautifully choreographed piece uh, that uh, um, you know, got them a lot of acclaim. And after we started talking to them, it didn't take long really for us all to decide that we really wanted to build a Rube Goldberg machine. Uh, a Rube Goldberg machine, for those of you who don't know, is a very complicated machine to perform a relatively simple task. Um, uh, it's a meandering, complicated chain reaction that often involves materials in unlikely ways. Um, now, when we started talking about this machine, we, we sort of started creating some design principles, uh, 10 basic core principles that we came to refer to as the Ten Commandments. The first of these is that we couldn't have any magic. And that was important because we wanted the whole thing to feel very authentic. Um, we, al it always, we always wanted it to be very clear how you got from point A to point C. And um, uh, the basic rule of thumb here is that if my mother couldn't understand how something happened, then we couldn't use it. The second idea was that, of course, we wanted the band interaction, uh, integration. The, the band, of course, it's a music video for them, so we had to include them. And uh, for us, it was important that we have the band, uh, the machine act upon the band and not the other way around. We wanted the machine action to follow the song feeling, so as the song got more and more exciting, so should the machine. Uh, that was pretty, pretty straightforward. The, the fourth uh, item is that uh, we wanted the, uh, the machine to be messy. Of course, we were all very excited about that. We had this enormous space that we wanted to take uh, advantage of. It was 10,000 square feet divided between two floors with a hole in the middle of the upper floor that we would use to build our own elevator to lower the cameraman between the two floors to continue the operations of the machine. We wanted the machine to start the music. So the machine would start and it would travel some distance, hit play on an iPod or a tape deck or something. And uh, then from that moment on, we would stay synced uh, between the song and the machine, hitting rhythm and specific beats along the way. And it's getting more complicated now, right? Can you feel? And end precisely on time. Right. Additionally, um, we wanted the machine to play part of the song. So at a certain point along the way, the playback would stop. We would record live audio of the machine itself plinking out notes for the, for the song. So now we're talking about millisecond precision. And as if all of that wasn't complicated enough, our 10th commandment, we wanted it in one shot. So here's some statistics about this machine that, that we built. Um, the, the first thing is that there were 89 distinct interactions, uh, different types of interaction in the machine. Uh, we took 85 takes to get three successful runs. In the process, we destroyed two pianos and more than 10 televisions, uh, went to Home Depot well over 100 times, and destroyed a high-heeled shoe when one of our engineers uh, came back from a nice dinner, took off her shoes, threw them in a pile, and another engineer came along and went, oh, that would make a nice trigger. And before she knew it, it had been screw-gunned into position. And uh, if you look carefully, you can see it in the video. Uh, so what did we learn from this experience, these you know, three months in a warehouse uh, building this machine? Well, we learned that small stuff stinks. Small balls on little wooden tracks are incredibly susceptible to vibration, temperature change, humidity, uh, little dust on the track, and suddenly things go uh, awry. Uh, we were measuring angles in, in hundredths of a degree to try to get things to run exactly right. But as much as small stuff stinks, it's absolutely essential. You can't build a machine without the small stuff. If for no other reason, then you have to start small so you have somewhere to go, right? What else? Well, we learned that planning is important. 
These are two uh, diagrams uh, of components that, uh, in, in at least the bottom case, were completely built. Uh, that is the overhead view of a four by eight foot table that was completely built, it operated well, but it was not in line with the aesthetic, and so we had to remove it. So as much as planning is important, in fact, none of these images are of things that ultimately made it into the machine. So as I say, as planning is important, so in fact is flexibility really important. What else? Well, we learned that it's important to put reliable stuff last. You don't want to have things failing at the 95th percent point in the operation of the machine, at least not regularly, right? When the machine reset to do the entire machine takes an hour, and if something fails in the first you know, little bit, it takes five minutes to reset, you want things failing there. You don't want things failing at the very end. And of course, life can be messy. And I think it's important to remember uh, that as messy as it gets sometimes, as wonderful as it gets sometimes, it's important to remember that this too shall pass. Thank you all. Thank you, Adam. Oh, thank you, John. Right on.